especially for all of us who are trying to understand the subjects. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, now we are moving on to uh, listen to the future of data. This person is new to YAR, but he is not new to uh, new to the region. Father P. T. Joseph is here with us to share with us on the future of data. He is the webmaster of Don Bosco India and uh, uh, he has been managing the website. Uh, he has been having a lot of ideas on you know the, the issues related to you know, using social media, using data in a very big way. He is also in the uh, I think the principal of SIGA in the printing institute in Chennai, one of the well equipped printing institutes in Chennai. So we are happy for the PT that you are with us and you are uh, here to share with us the idea on the future of data. Thank you and over to you for the PT. Good afternoon. I'm happy I'm here with you as a solution and as a friend. And I'm happy that I'm part of this beautiful social work and action uh, with at risk. Uh, today, I'd like to present to you, as I said, something on our data, some terms, and we as the art uh, forum, how we can use it and go ahead with future planning. Next slide. Since we're talking about data, I thought I can use the data about our Asia. This is about a survey taken last year of NGOs who really understand these terms that we talk about, all current, current centered around data and the technology, uh, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, blockchain technology, cloud computing, Internet of Things, machine learning, predictive analytics. Virtual reality. Yes, we have been using these words often and hearing it. I only wish that we really understand the term in its gist as a layperson and during our conversation the discussions in our forum and we I really mean what we are saying. So I'd like to take you for the first part through these terms quickly so that during our discussions in, during this uh, uh, forum and later on it will be much of use to us. Next. As you saw, the data showed that most of our NGOs in Asia don't seem to understand the terms or the usefulness of it or impact that could create an organization. What is this artif artificial intelligence? It is like a human being who is able to understand and learn on its own. And the data is given to computers to do this. It can learn a language, it can learn a feeling of a human being, it can learn the, and see all the world as we ourselves see. And for that, they use the word artificial intelligence or just AI. Next. This you have seen in films or would have seen in posters and people call this uh, reality as AR. What is AR? Augmented reality. Next slide. The augmented reality is not to do anything with our real life real world. It is an imaginary world that they, they create around you, a fancy, a fantasy, then probably they also create a type of data that can play with you. It is more for children, more for you know, uh, training away from real world. Used in military, used in uh, medical science and uh, training program, and as you know, boys use it in our video games. And for education, it can be also used in labs. Next. And youngsters, youth at risk, probably they are more interested in this type of augmented reality. As boys play now very types of games like PUBG or whatever it is, games they are having apps in their mobile. Now, the companies are moving towards, including Facebook, they are trying to move into this type of reality, augmented reality, where my photo, my physique, my friend, my friend's photo, and their features can be brought into our games 
and it's more, much more thrilling than to see somebody else image there. So it is a social engaging uh, reality data that people are using now. It will be soon coming into our homes, into our offices. It is a feeling like my friend and I in the same scene, playing the same game, having the same experience. Next. So the augmented reality is a simple term. Uh, you have a reality in front of you, a human or world reality, and you just have uh, data that will show you the details of the reality that you're seeing. In this example, the car, it can show you what type of engine it has, probably it can also show you what is the serial number of the engine inside. To that extent, it can help you with the data. The tire, how many hours it has gone, or when you are supposed to change the parts of the machine of this car, is all integrated to the real uh, scenario that you can go through. These are used as a data for augmented reality. The mixed reality is a term that we use to combine these two, the actual reality and the the hybrid type of the virtual reality. Next. And often these words are confusing, so for, therefore I thought I can just have a slide on this alone. Virtual reality is not a real life experience. It is imaginary and only imaginary. You can walk upside down, you can fly, you can jump, you can swim, you can do anything you want. It is just a fantasy world. And for such scenario, you say VR or virtual reality. When you say augmented reality, you see the world around you and you like to see and get information that what you see, like Google Lens or whatever that you have in your mobile already now, it's coming under the part of augmented reality. The mixed reality is you are in a room and suddenly you find somebody coming in virtually. You can talk to them. You can push them. You can see an animal, you can see a bird, you can see a fish, you can see a flower blooming in front of you. That is actually happening somewhere else brought here to your room. And this type of reality, that experience that being brought by future of this data, we call this as a mixed reality experiences. And these terms are new for most of us. For some time back, it was new for me, the term blockchain technology and data. You just remember that word that called blockchain is meant to do something with money transactions. Anything that you do through app transacting money, anything you do on the bank now is using this data driven technology called blockchain technology. No one can be cheated, probably it can be traced. No bank can uh, steal your money. Everything is transparent. This technology is in place. You mention about this, you simply say blockchain technology and people will easily understand. Next. And I know your data is all in Microsoft Azure. Microsoft Azure is a cloud type of uh, technology. And what this cloud is all about, people have a lot of misunderstanding about cloud. It's not in the cloud, it is in a computer. What type of computer? We're just going to see in a short time. The, the difference between having a server in your own place and having a, a cloud server in our Microsoft Azure is quite a different uh, reality. Here you need person, you need uh, to take care of it, to install a software, you need a license for a software. So many things that goes along with it, UPS we need, your security that you have for the room, everything goes into uh, your server. But then if you go for uh, cloud server, everything else is taken care of. And you just need to pay as you go using it. As you grow, you have to pay. That's as simple as it. You concentrate on your activities. We need not worry too much about data that we have to handle, the storage, the processing, the security, and the rest of it. Next. Often, you'll be coming now with these new words in papers and magazines and advertisements, all IoT, Internet of Things. You already have things in your home, in your offices. Your fridge, for example your AC, for example, your watch, your anything, any gadget that you see around now has internet of things inside. Only thing, it has not been connected to somewhere else, to some other database. If you are able to have a mobile app that connects your TV or your heater or your door or whatever it is, then those come under this category. Therefore, the data is going to flow from your devices, from your AC 
apparatus from your uh, xerox machines the data is going to flow from i don't know from your temperature room temperature from your medicine that you are going to take or the blood test you self blood test you are going to take anything that you are going to do with any gadget in the world it is going quietly to pass on the data to a server and this reality of future is called iot it's already happening in us so it is not you it is not a human being who is keying in their data it is device communicating the data to another device to server and this reality is called iot next and how do they do this and we call this term machine learning with all the data that you supply humans entering machines devices iot entering data and so many things that are happening around to the server the server begins to think like human beings the the machines are taught to feel understand the emotions of human beings i don't know where you can apply them in yeah settings whether he's going to be hungry he is sick he is feeling sad Uh, he wants to run away he is upset probably these machines can help us in the future but the investment yeah it's another question altogether so machine learning is a machine that a computer that learns about human beings it is not we learning a language computer learning our language it is not we understand the parts of the computer the computer is trying to understand the parts of a mach- of you a body for example so whole way of, around and deep learning is nothing but a technology you are, you are employ to understand to dig out some information that you are looking for when there are thousand millions and terabytes and gigabytes around next big data is nothing but a variety of data so often this meeting also we hear also today we say ah oh, we have big data uh, it's a technical term it means something else hundreds and thousands and lakhs are not called big data shortly we'll see what it is the big data is not just the number alone the big data is a type of data that you have the variety that can and it can how fast it can you know communicate to others all this comes under the term called big data the data is nothing but unprocessed data is called raw data or data lake and when you do a mining when you do a searching and it predicts something that's going to happen like weather forecast or behavior of a student or any disaster that's going to happen then we call this use the word detective or, pre- or predictive data mining next so when you use the word uh, big data please have a uh, eye on this slide people are not talking about kilobytes we can take one kilobyte to one data for example or in one information maybe your name is one day di- kilobyte your age is one kilobyte for example so thousands of such data can be 1 kilobyte megabyte so many of times kilobyte and go down you will find in gigabyte and today people are talking about yotta byte yotta byte when you cross after terabyte data if you have in your database terabyte of informations please call your data as big data till then please don't call this as a big data you may have thousands of uh, staff you may have thousands of records it is not at termed big data next just to know where our data is sitting it is not sitting in a cloud it is sitting on a machine that is on a floor or on a field and as big as a field like this every data in the google your email gmail all are resting in one of these places physically next this is one of the data center of google and they have six different levels of security they have fencing they have policing they have they have a lot of sensors around your fences and lot of other mechanism that one need to go through if you want to enter a uh, military base your data is treated like a uh, weapon today data is seen as a resource that nobody can steal and should not destroyed not even approach nearby so data you are talking about today is ruling the government is using it government is using this data and protecting this data like as if they are protecting a big bomb shell that's how it is and the data you supply the data you use is so so very important next and it's not just one computer it is not just one uh, ups 
it is not just one particular system so many other support system is there which are or we cannot manage our own so we have to get the service from elsewhere in your case azure microsoft next this is the computers rack computers rack computers where our data is stored in google or in azure microsoft next it's a floor various num various floors and various rows various you no know, matrix of uh, uh, machines are here they are all running in terabytes and gigabytes and uh, the world can contain here these are called data centers okay next yeah no one have access except uh, like a military an atomic bomb center you have access the scientists have access therefore this type of system administrators have access next the point here i'm going to say is not in the cloud it is in the machine it is in a hard drive next and in india they know we are growing in data therefore they have invested money here in three places pune mumbai and chennai next and as microsoft azure has grown over the technology using their process the speed and process the technology so the data and so we have to understand this so this is only to show how in the microsoft level company they have within few years time they have to really you know move ahead with their speed and processing technology to be used now currently they are using 3x beast servers to help us on google database and processing next probably we have to understand there is something called fog coming in like cloud computers edge computer that we talked about iot machines or mobiles and devices now the new terminology that coming in data management is fog so this introduction introducing to you so when the data is in billions it is under the last cadre edge decoration then we have millions of such uh, nodes and servers we call as a fog and what you currently we talk now is about cloud is right on top really thousands are there in the whole world next okay with this background i just want to start our discussions and to start the discussions i like to propose some questions so my statement is this as uh, one of the uh, starting uh, uh, father said i think uh, neil amar said let's not go for too many data too much too, too much data will slow down the system is very good right way of doing it so my i only suggestion is don't do less don't do more just do it right so this is my advice and take away for today and how do you understand this i have some sound points just to list it alone so these are uh, checklists that we have to understand whether we are data driven organization or are, are we actually doing the way we should be done is your goal set is it well defined then start collecting data towards it don't collect any data that is not part of your planning secure a data who is using it is it uh, away from any fire accident or temperature changing over physically who is now next third is the data how it is detected from the climate from the physical hazards third you may collect data and suddenly your hard disk may be corrupted or you have something somebody deleted it by chance as it happened in many organizations so these are very vital questions that you have to ask to run this data driven organizations next slide who is managing your assets do you have a certificate for it are you complying with all the government regulations you can't simply collect the data you have no right to collect data sometimes and we don't know when they come and see your data they say who gave you permission to collect this data it may be you no know, violating the privacy for example so you we, you and i as educators you and i as managers and co coordinators we are dealing with children and we have to know which are data that be collected which should not be collected for which somebody one of us must study and help us in this process data has to be interlinked if you don't connect with others no use of having your data you stand alone with standing alone 
the whole of world of information you are just lost now the data you need to capture how to capture what device to use and you have to adopt to the new changes every day machines are changing every day softwares are coming up every day equipments are changing every day the data format is changing if you don't change you lose all the data you save for 10 20 years next these are questions for our uh question for qa once this is done what type of data data do you generate accordingly you have to invest do you have right data not any data so that you when you start analyzing you have all the data in place do you use your data you have thousands of data do you use them regularly what's the outcome that you show it what are infographics that you are doing i think you are already doing some of them We're happy to know that snipness is coming and you are using infographics in your newsletters it's already good sign that your organization is data driven organization do you share your data how do you share the simplest way of sharing your data across each other is excel the next level is api or any other technique that you know and in azure that currently your data now is sitting is well in place to give any type of service provided provided you pay for every service do you make decisions uh, give new services based on data most of you are saying yes you are able to showcase the government you are able to showcase donor and get new do donations that's already good enough so i think yard is doing a good job having invested in this data and you are using it and my question second question is what is the impact that you have in, in society you and i are happy project has come money has come we have spent it we have data shown records closed project closed but my question for my side would be as a outsider also come a public man as it actually made a society you no know, change or just an individual for that you need to engage and employ data scientists data scientists are those who are able to handle big data it is not just your excel sheet it is not just your mysql data these are different varieties of techniques they have to use and they have to be certified and in case you need such uh, people they will be able to see in the world in india in your state how the world is there and currently what you are saying they will be able to compare your data research that you have with the actual reality outside society and much more authenticity and transparency can be brought into your reporting and in your project writing and the third question that i like to ask and be satisfied is if it benefits youth at risk then whole project that we are talking about is success people are more and more talking about virtual reality augmented reality but for our boys they need physical touch real emotional approach a hug the care are we doing it if you if you are doing these two together probably then we are again on the right track my worry is these boys eventually will go into virtual reality these boys eventually will go into augmented reality mixed reality are we ready when our youth when our youth at risk move into that realm are we ready to move along with them and give continue to give the service this is the primary question i have in front of you to discuss and find solutions for and to wind up my presentation next slide next slide there is a bridge people built beautifully and said no natural disaster will shake it down everything is engineering is looked into huge money is invested and everything everything said everybody was very happy about it and you know then what happened flood came and actually as it was planned the bridge resisted the damage it stood by all the natural disasters but one thing changed you know what changed in this picture the river changed its course the bridge was there well intact of no use so my question is we have invested on technology we are investing on data we are talking about future data are we relevant now or will we relevant as things move out of our realm when our youth when our youth at risk move away from this particular situation scenario a way of behavior when they move on to augmented reality will yaar move along with them or will the river flow somewhere away from the bridge it was built and standing still solid thank you
Thank you very much, Father Titi, for the wonderful presentation and you have given us a good perspective on the future of data. You have also highlighted uh, very much on the newer technologies that are coming in, the augmented reality, the data lake and whatnot. You have and also you have ended with a very good finish on on how are we really moving along with the along with the trend that is there, especially with the young at risk, and uh, lots of questions for reflections and lots of precautions to be taken and uh, assurance that our data is safe, uh, especially when we hire our service with the with the uh, trend. And you also said that our data is in Microsoft Azure. Yes, it is in Microsoft Azure, and the security is not a not a big concern. When we use some of these latest technologies. Thank you very much, Father, for taking us through this journey of the future of data and assuring that we can go along. Now we have with us, Father, Almera Gregory, the province AR coordinator of Mumbai, who also showed a lot of interest in data. Father Gregory, thank you for being with us. I have a few questions for you. You have been director of Shelter Town Moscow for six years and we have just moved out. And you have been also working in Gujarat mission. Have you come across any moment where you experience the power of data uh, in your man management and how it helped you? Can you share with us some of your experience? Sure. sure. <coughs> uh, let me begin by thanking Father Tony and Father Ekmanis for inviting me for this uh, session, my experiences. Uh, my journey began, say, six years back uh, in my first year at Shelter, where uh, somebody invited me to put up a proposal to one of the big NGOs for CSR activity. Uh, it was a Mahanagar Gas Limited. So when we put the proposal to them, uh, you know, about Shelter, asking for some funds, they were ready to give us. But uh, in the process, of uh, getting the funds, they began to ask a lot of questions, a lot of, uh, you know, things that are needed, a lot of data, a lot of data. So, like, for example, trust documents, donors list, policies, information about the boys and statistics, uh, the qualification of the staff, uh, you know, even, even annual reports, newsletters. Now, the, the list was endless and that is the time I realized that, you know, my organization means everything to put in order. And uh, when we have these things in order, then things move very fast. And it took some time for me. But uh, when I started this journey, it, it helped me uh, to put things in the uh, right perspective. And I realized that uh, as my organization is losing funds for various projects, same time, I needed big companies like uh, these who will help me to keep my show going on. And that is why the need uh, to keep my data up to date and also prepare my staff came came along with this. Uh, so that was automatically uh, the, the, the data itself helped me uh, to put everything in right perspective. So, yes, sir. Thank you very much. I have a real question to you. You have been championing managing flood of inspections from officials, especially in the last few years, at least two years, I know, from various authorities, you know, from central government, from state government, and whatnot. And you have managed them quite well. You have been a champion in that. Have you felt the assistance of data when you, yes, 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 definitely. Uh, how do we, uh, can you explain some of it? Yeah, what happened is that uh, in my last year, I had a series of inspections starting from all, from all across India. We started from NCPCR, then the state, then CWCs, you know, coming at any, any moment of, you know, our existence over there. And uh, whenever they came, you know, as you know that uh, these people, when they come for inspection, first and foremost is that they sit in your office and they start inspecting all your documents, your registers and whatever information you have. And if it's up to date, you know, then they start moving down 
and you know start checking whatever is there they uh, cross check the thing and uh, it so happened that uh, when we had a series of inspection automatically we had a series of learning also because uh, in that moments we realized okay this was missing that was missing and uh, due to our daily meetings we have daily meeting with the staff and also monthly meeting and so when we had these regular meetings automatically we would uh, tell the staff we would follow the staff and ask whether your registers your documents are up to date so when it happens when uh, when you have a series of inspections and also same time good network with the department because also if you have a good network with the uh, dwc cwc they also help you because at the end of the day we have to be very humble enough and say okay we don't know they can guide us can you help us so these bodies are there to help you they they, they are not there so much okay you get once in a blue moon uh, you know some so called people who will try to put you down or find some faults but at the end of the day if you are humble enough and say okay i would like to bring a change in my organization i would like to learn uh, what is missing in my documents i would like my organization to be on the top of the chart so please guide us so the, these things happening around you automatically uh, you know you put things in order and uh, the the staff also uh, you know when you have regular meetings with them they also uh, keep everything in in order learned when we had this series of inspection and one of the good things that happened is that we as i also mentioned earlier when you had come there whenever we had inspections okay we we made a committee and uh, the moment we i i didn't have to get panic you know oh, the inspector has come also oh, now what to do he is going here he is going there i had to inform one person and that person knew exactly what to do you know so he had a list of the things to be done and he would guide those other staff because the inspector would come straight away into my office and sit in my office okay and then i have no chance to tell people okay okay now they they are going to do this they are going to do that so this particular staff knew exactly what to do you know from the from the time the inspector would come inside you know uh, uh, there would be one person who would entertain by getting uh, glass of the milk there would be another person who would uh, you know go to different places and make sure that those things are kept so the, after uh, the inspection from my office uh they would come down and they would see things you know quite different and they would be surprised how things you know are uh, changed and how things are so efficient so definitely as time went on we started learning from our mistakes and started growing thank you father and the uh, last question that i have for you is you know you said you had an experience with one of the software company coming and offering you Uh, showcasing some of your um, some of their you know the new the software that they have come up with and then after that i also realized that you went ahead and then you conducted a training program on the use of data in a data driven driven decision making for other ngos in mumbai and you had invited at nearly 10 15 or 20 ngos and they were also part of the national team was also part of it what led you to this realization honestly let me apologize that i didn't take much interest in the initial years when this homelink and this uh, the child and mind program was there and uh, it is when this one particular gentleman he came to me regularly to my office and said i have developed a program i would like to you know, uh, share with you there is that and i saw his interest so i said okay fine uh, what i will do instead of you presenting to me i said you why don't you come and we have uh, once a month staff meeting and uh, just 10 15 minutes i will give you a, a time slot of 50 to 20 minutes you just do a presentation and uh, if the staff likes it and if i like it then we will uh, we will see what to do next so it so happened that when he was presenting uh, in that uh, software he had practically everything okay practically everything means whatever you needed so for example donors for example your donors are giving then you can uh, you can uh, enlist uh, what type of donors are coming how much money are getting everything you know so he had developed that package and as he was going on saying all these things one of the staff during the conversation said we have all these things 
we have all these things so that is the time i i said we have there i mean where exactly we have say we have in this child ms software everything is there maybe few things may be missing but in this package everything is there but after the thing uh, i mean he he didn't tell the person uh, so as to discourage him that person was asked later on maybe i asked him after how much does this package cost if you are going to sell me <coughs> he told me a very huge sum almost say one and a half lakh to two lakhs and uh, he told me that if you want to update the year and there few things you have to pay another 50000 and then i said to myself i have something unfortunately i have not looked into it in, in and i'm simply uh, you know uh, looking at the, these kind of programs and that is why i started you know personally looking at the child ms program and this and that and i i, I began to value it and when i began to value it the first thing i did was to train my staff to appreciate what we have and then i said if our our staff is also valuing whatever we have why don't we take it to a broader floor and that is how i thought of inviting other ngos uh, not the solution but the other ngos who we are in touch okay call them and also show that our don bosco a solution network in national at national level has something very good to offer okay so everything can be it's it's free of cost it, it will not cost you so much as the other ngos who are uh, other you know organization making money on it that is why i said we have something and we need to promote it and that is the journey began of not only guiding my staff but also try to invite as many ngos possible who can you know take take a uh, advantage of this software thank you for the uh, great uh, yeah. your problems so far in the last 4 to 5 years have been reaching out to more than 2500 kids the type of children that you have been serving is the surrendered children 2019 and alone when we arrived we were able to see surrendered children etc is being taken care congratulations for all the work across maharashtra mumbai as well as in uh, goa father abhijit is here and uh, he also had the center in uh, in uh, in gujarat putting together a lot of beautiful work in india congratulations for the gravity and for sharing with us the value of what we have and the data and the importance of data especially how you manage with the data and you are doing also a lot of learning thank you very much thank now you. we are now we are moving on to the question hour we have few minutes stay on we have only one question uh, so far that has come um from father arvin father arvin is asking father leo to father leo address very clearly address to father leo can you please explain further as to what is meant by 360 degree perspective of analysis any any light on that arvin is thanks for thanks for putting forward this question So in Goa, do you have 360 degree of a tour, man? So that's why nice. you go around, right? That's why it is complete. It is uh, holistic and all-round analysis. I'll just give you an example. Uh, we started collecting the details of all the staff. Just uh, not just name of the staff, age, date of joining, and you know the address and uh, phone number. but we also started collecting the other details for example the blood group and uh, the second level of contact persons and all that you know once it happened that one of our staff members wife started uh, I mean, hospitalized and uh, and there was a request for ab positive blood group and immediately our uh, data manager uh, flipped through our database and immediately found that Uh, there was a one person from our staff list who, ha- who had this ab positive group so you were able to immediately you know uh, get the help and uh, go for a donation of this blood so i am just saying the staff details at the micro level it will help us to uh, you know solve an issue and for example staff appraisal 360 degree appraisal would mean not just an appraisal by the management it is the self appraisal it is the superior appraisal it is the subordinate appraisal and also the peer appraisal so when we have this type of a holistic appraisal then it will give you a definitely a way forward for 
uh, your uh, organization. So I think Aravind, uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Leo, for answering. Uh, any other question? We can allow one more question. Anybody wants to ask, just put on the mic and speak. Anybody I have a want? question. Yes. Well, uh, a lot well, of CSR companies are asking for most of our data. Okay. They want to know our financial status or audit reports, A to Z. How safe it is to share our data with the CSR companies? Anybody can answer. Anybody else wants to answer? So, very good question. Um, this issue has come. Yes, Father Greg. Yes, you are done. Father Greg, you are done. Uh, it's true that uh, when you apply to certain companies, especially big ones, uh, uh, they ask you for all these in Can't hear you, Father. Okay. So, when these organizations who are doing CSR, or big companies, they ask you for all these information, all the various audit report, newsletters, you know, policies, you need to ask them, do you have a format for this? Okay? Because uh, each of these companies, they have uh, this CSR team. When you have, when you know that they are, they have a particular format, and those particular formats have point system, then you know that they are very genuine. But if, if they are simply asking information for the sake of information, and they do not have a kind of a pattern or a, a kind of a policy uh, to give funds, then you you have to be very careful in you know giving information. So whenever these companies they ask you AB, whatever information for possible, you need to then and ask them what is the guidelines, what is you know what is the system that you follow as to give us funds. When they tell you, okay, this is the system that we follow, then you you have to make a judgment whether to share that those information with them or not. Thank you, Fazil. Yeah. Yes, Fazil. Um, these companies who give you money as donations, no, for project, have right only to ask those data for which they are funded. They can't ask you for the complete data, and you don't need to give. That is first point. Second point, you know, uh, this business is all about data selling and making profit of or profit out of it, and they may even write another project out of your data, and have huge money for themselves. So tell them very clearly, right at the beginning of funding and agreeing terms and conditions. You are paying for this. This is the data that you can provide. So deal has to be also right, made right at the beginning, not at the end. Yes. Yes. There are uh, data that are sensitive. There are data that you put out in the public domain. Like for example, uh, even your uh, accounts. There are certain demands if you are having HCRA. There is a rule by which you have to put your data in the public domain, on your website or in the home, home uh, ministry website. So such details you can always do. But when it comes to sensitive information like children's data or staff information or the personal information, you have a right to say no and uh, you need to scrutinize the question itself before giving. So this is uh, from my side. Okay. Um, if you do not have any questions, Greg, yes, last question by Greg. Yes, please unmute and ask. Okay, uh, let me first congratulate Father Piti Joseph for his wonderful presentation. Uh, and I like the yeah, total whatever the patient you gave. Uh, what I, I, I also observe that uh, the younger generation or the young actors, you or you in our parish, most of them are going into social media. They don't want any formal gatherings in those kind of old system. Today's young people, they are used to, they like media, they like social media, they want to connect with each other with social media. And it is very much to, uh, you know, the moment they are 18 plus, the first thing what they want is a mobile. And with that mobile, their whole reality is changing. 
and i believe the time has come right now for us to think in those terms how to help young people who are caught up in this so called virtual reality or you know it's an another playground altogether so i don't know uh, how do we balance how do we guide these young people in these realities so as to you know be connect with them it's a very sensitive thing but same time we as citizens we need to slowly get into this this reality of uh, coming in touch with uh, young people who are caught up with uh, you know various pubg games and various things which is affecting them so how do we go about it is a something that we need to learn in 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 months to come yes father pg you would like to answer yeah thank you for the words of appreciation i like to give an example how a business is working so that we can also imitate or move in those lines of uh, recent past you have seen in cities malls coming up big big malls no the purpose of malls is to get people first inside physically then attract them engage them and make the business deal out of it even to 1 rupee they like to make it and they can do it only physically they are coming there similarly in us in universities in australia or anywhere else now with the covid situation like this they had online courses they have you know of courses you know camp, campus uh, realities now these two have merged and now one is out they are only one is existing in this scenario what they are trying to say is this you have to give all the service that they require in your platform now children are having no i don't know they have something in your ya centers for engaging with their friends they go somewhere else to engage with some you no know, entertainment they go somewhere else they have whatsapp they have twitter for different various things no now the reality is you have to give them like mall all the services they are looking for in the daily life in your system it is not enough that yar has database of individuals information as profile it's not enough you have to give them services apart from what exactly yar is competent about so we have to give them chatting facilities inside your system in your app you have to give them a type of uh, vr uh, virtual reality or augmented reality in the future only then they will stay with you that is first point second point is with the new government you know regulations that are coming in any data that you take or capture from any individual we have to give back to them they should know what data you have so that's going to be a regulation binding on us so in your app it's not that directors or national heads have a say on seeing the data of individual centers and individuals but then individual concern if i am part of the project i should see all the data you are seeing at least the data that you are saying using no which is which is concerning me so i think very seriously this another 3 years time government will come on us and say do your beneficiaries have access to his to his data that you are using online so this investment is must is like you already seen google for example all these years they are tracking your movement but today with so many case that they have to go through they are giving you option so over 10 20 years if you have used gmail they know all the places physically you have walked and now they are giving opening to you say this is your track history as if they are giving a magnanimous service to us they are compelled today therefore we who are handling others data especially children data has to be given back to them now they are happy with us saying that oh how do you know my birthday they should know that it is there already in the data which they should see so that will become a regulator soon that investment has to be made now thank you for the pg for really helping us to understand that the future of data and what we need to do especially with regard to children possibly social media and other persons as we need to also make our children available in whatever possible way we have for the pg michael our regional counselor thank you for being with us father and most welcome now we have the concluding words by our secretary of dbr forum father tony pelisi over to you father tony please father tony yeah uh for the awareness how much time <clears throat> do we have hello you 
Yes, sir. About five minutes, you can continue. Okay. I might exceed five minutes, I'm afraid, but anyway, I'll try. <clears throat> so, Father Biju, thank you for joining and welcome to this meeting, first of all. And, uh, dear fathers and uh, my dear friends, at the end of this uh, wonderful conversation, exchange of ideas and experiences on data, all I can say is that I'm personally very inspired encouraged, motivated. Among the most wonderful things we have heard and experienced today, the topmost on my list is the fact that they have tapped into the wealth or I can say treasure house of our own resources and potential. It's so good to see and hear the directors, the our leaders, the people who truly make things happen at the ground level lead this conversation. A sincere congratulations and thanks to each one of the speakers and panelists. I want to share a warm word of appreciation to our team here at the National Office led by Father Aquinas, Maishri Austin from Bangalore, and the directors and coordinators at the hub and nodes for the detailed planning, careful and professional management of this discussion. Our hope is that this is one big step of several more, even more resolute steps towards harnessing the power of data. What would be your reaction or response or immediate emotion if I say that? Between 1950 and 2010, the number of tube wells drilled in India rose from 1 million to 30 million. You may not have been so impressed. If I were to put it another way, 30 million bore wells were drilled in the last 60 years, half a million each year. Perhaps not strong enough, but if I were to say that 1,400 wells were drilled each day, that looks good. And uh, if I were to calculate that there are 1,400 minutes in a day, and I put it this way, India drilled one bore well a minute, non-stop for the last 60 years. It does make impact. So data and the way it is presented, are very, very important. Let's take another example. Two lakh people die in India every year due to lack of access to, adequate access to safe water. This is a 2018 Niti Aayog data. Two lakh people die in India every year. That works out to about 550 persons dying daily in India for lack of adequate water, access to water. And that works out to two persons die in India every five minutes due to lack of adequate access to water. By the time I finish my talk, four people would have died, thinking that I'll take 10 minutes. Don't kill many. <laughs> Or when you hear that one child goes missing in India every eight minutes. By the time I speak, uh, finish my talk, one child, one family would have lost one child in India. That's about 175 children going missing a day or 60 to 65,000 children missing annually. You know the power of data when it is presented forcefully and we don't need a lot of examples but I just wanted to highlight a few. All of
pada tony di lost you halo Uh, I think uh, for the Tony is having problem with the uh, problem with the data we are trying to bring into this room. Just hold on. You're all are you all hearing for the Tony, for the Leo? Yeah, yeah. You can hear for the Tony? No, as you stop, no, right time. You stopped at the right time. We do not hear from that time onwards. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, we are just, we are just, we are just waiting for the Tony here. Just a minute. This net is having problem now. We tried another technique today. Just wait. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. You can ask for the PT to give some data. <laughs> it's futuristic. I have to. Cloud data, cloud data you can supply. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can use the you can use some apps called Snapchat. S N A P. Snapchat. Snapchat. Yeah, you can try yourself and see how things are. What I'm talking about, augmented reality boys are already using. Girls are already using at home. Children, street children are already using at home. The streets. Okay. Uh, yeah, number of them. Google Lens, for example, that is in your, in your mobile itself. Google Lens, Snapchat. You want some more names to have and to enjoy all this? Please list it in the chat box. Okay, okay, I'll do, I'll do it. Who's? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> That's smart, yeah. Hello. Ah, yes, Father Tony. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I don't know the internet. Yes, Father. I don't know what you heard. What, what no, you know, we, we lost you before four minutes. One child was missing. Okay, we start from there. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I'll just go ahead. So, um, what the point I was trying to make was that uh, you know the power of data when it is uh, presented forcefully when it is presented uh, focused to the audience that is listening so i really don't have to go much more into that when i first began interacting with uh, ccis and uh, yar senders six seven years ago um either on phone or on visits i would ask the directors or the fathers or the main caregivers <clears throat> how old is this sender or how many years have you been engaged in this work? Most people used to be a bit vague, yeah, around 70s, 78, 80. They were not even sure when their sender started. When you ask next, how many children have you put back on their feet or how many people whose stories you have, people whom you have put through and are standing on their feet or are doing well. Similar questions, most Often the reply would be, I'm not so sure. Actually, we have not gone into that or something like, there must be some data somewhere we really have to examine. And that was standard response. Of course, things have changed a lot in these years. Compare this to uh, an article that appeared last week. Uh, Migrants Resilience Collective was uh, launched last week, August 8th or 7th. And they have published that they want to reach 10 million migrant workers and their families in 100 districts and cities over the next five years. The leadership is taken by Jan Sahas, you have heard about them, 
And they also said at the end of that article that they have reached out to more than 1 million families across 19 states working with 40 plus CBOs and 40 plus donors. Contributed over 1 million of the 4 million workers connected with the government's skill mapping, mapping program and facilitated BOCW, construction workers registration for 58,000 workers, specific and sharp. When can we expect to make information like this available at our fingertips? We did make an effort, you will remember those of you who attended the National Seminar in Mumbai, we had a Pan-India statistics displayed on the board, but it was just an attempt. It didn't give the whole picture because many of our senders did not have or did not share that data. But the fact is that we do have the data. We have the admission registers, we have the care plans, we have the school of the skilling records, we have the placement records, we have the reintegration records, we have the annual reports, the project reports, so much documentation. It's mostly all there, but lying in a heap or lying in heaps. So that brings us to the basics. What do we understand? by data, what, or more accurately, what are data? I go to the classical definition. Data is a quantity of raw, unorganized facts, pieces of information. Data can be something very simple and random. And most important, data is quite useless unless it is organized or unless it is processed. This idea was stressed by a couple of speakers and I will come to that towards the end. So when data is processed, organized, structured and presented in a given context, in order to make it useful, then it becomes information. So for example, a student's test score, the the marks of all the students in a school for, a, for an examination are pieces of data. But if we have the average score of a class or the average score of the boys versus the girls or the scores between maths and science, etc., then we have information. If we have temperature readings of the whole world for the past 100 years, that is data. But if this data is organized, analyzed to find that global temperatures are rising, that it has risen by this percent and the rising is so much more in some area, whatever, that is information. If we have, um, say, the number of visitors to a website, that's an example of data. But finding out that traffic from one country to our website is increasing, whereas the traffic from another country is decreasing, that becomes meaningful analysis. And because data needs to be interpreted, analyzed, it is quite possible and it is really happening that data can be interpreted incorrectly. When this leads, uh, when this happens, we have erroneous conclusions, data becomes misleading, and this often happens because of incomplete or out of context representation of data. There is a writer, Nate Silver, you might have read, or you, must, you might know the book, The Signal and the Noise why so many predictions fail and some don't. This was a bestseller in 2012. He almost precisely foretold the results of the 2012 elections, presidential election in the US. 
He said, numbers have no way of speaking for themselves. We speak for them. We imbue, we infuse them with meaning. So data is raw. Data is neutral. The meaning is what we give. The meaning is the way we present. And that's vital, especially in the modern world when we are so much bombarded with data. By the way, this guy is still active. He has a website called 538 and he's constantly updating probabilities of the success of uh, the candidates in the upcoming um, US presidential elections. I want to come to something again, a little bit classical and traditional, a little bit on the grammar of the word data or the usage of the word data. Data actually comes from, you will know, the singular Latin word datum, which actually means something given. It's, it's singular. It's not plural. And it dates back to around the 1600s, the usage of this word in the English language. But over time, the word has changed to its plural form, data. On the other hand, information is a much older word and it goes back to the 1300s. And it means the act of informing usually in regard to education, instruction, other knowledge, etc. So while information is a mass or uncountable form, it takes a singular work, this information is reliable. Data is technically plural now that deserves a plural work. Data are ready. Now, it's not just grammar, it has implication. In today's context, we use the plural form and that makes us confuse data with information. So when we say, this is the data we have, we are actually saying, this is the information we have. So now in modern usage, data has become the mass noun and takes a singular verb. And then we tend to mix up, we tend to confuse data with information. And this can be very, very dangerous. So the power of data ultimately boils, boils down to the way Yes, ma'am, to me. <coughs> ma'am, to me, your friend. Ma'am, to me. Ma'am, to me. Hello? Sorry for the interruption. Uh, we are checking out with Arjun. But the uh, PT was mentioning about, hello? Uh, PT was mentioning about uh, the information about the R centers, the minimum of information that we can put it up in the BIS, uh, and uh, we are working on it. And soon we'll be approaching you for correcting some of the information already we have, and then uh, we can put it up. 
DBTEC has already done and they have already uploaded the information in the uh, in their website, South Asia website. South Asia is coming up with a new website. So, in the same way, we will be also doing with the, um, the, the pro process of cleaning up some of the data that we have with all the information that we know already. Yes, are they turning your back? Yes, now we can hear you. Um, yes. sorry, sorry. I don't know where I where you lost. <laughs> okay, you are talking about uh, the data okay. and the information. Yes. Anyway, I just conclude. Um, um, what Father Ratna spoke about the power of data. Uh, I mean, what Father Ratna spoke about that uh, too much data will slow down our work. That touches a very important aspect. Because data is so much, because we are so over overwhelmed by that. The fundamental question is how is data organized? How does it move at different levels of the organization? And of course to the public. Who accesses what? And so of course we, um, the person who processes the data and the person who presents the data actually controls. You are aware that Today, Father Pity uh, commented on that. Today, Google controls much of our thinking, whether we like to agree with it or not. The internet and those who control the net control the thinking of the world. Therefore, we need to see who controls the data, who makes data available at various levels, and what are our systems for processing and presenting data. Father Leo had a very wonderful acronym for data. I liked it very much. And I think a lot of what I said um, hinges around uh, what he said. With apologies to Father Leo, I want to rearrange the words a little bit. Leo, I am wanting to put the last A first. A for analysis. Whatever data we have becomes useful only if it is analyzed. And uh, Father Pretty mentioned about artificial intelligence. Companies are trying for the power to analyze data as the human mind ana analyzes and as God made it, but at million times the speed. That's probably in a simple words what artificial intelligence is. So analysis, A, analysis that leads to decision making, correct analysis, accurate analysis, speedy analysis, in time analysis that leads to decision making, D, that leads to A, appropriate action. So data led decision making leading us to action and that takes us to the last word, the letter T, the target, achievement of the target and that builds transparency and trust. So by putting the last A first, I have changed that English word into a Hindi word Adat. When data becomes Adat, when data becomes a habit, I think we will have truly harnessed the power of data analysis, decision making, appropriate action, and uh, achieving the target. Once again, thank you so much, and we hope that uh, we will uh, take many more steps in taking this initiative forward and uh, truly harness the power that we have in the tools that we already have in uh, the Child Miss platform to achieve much more results and uh, also visibility. Thank you so much and sorry for the mess up of the internet and the sound and the voice. Thank you. Thank you Father Tony for beautifully summing up all the, the importance of data and how this data driven innovation can be achieved with all that you said. You have beautifully summed up on what is data and information and all the data being put together, we can use it and what is already there.
So now we come to the conclusion of this panel discussion. Thanks to all the speakers, thanks to all the panelists, and all, all uh, uh, the fathers who shared their experience. And one of the achievements of this uh, panel is we have found within our own um, fold, we have lots of people who can talk so much modern and the younger generation leading the show, especially in use of data, need of data, and the power of data. And uh, thanks to all the speakers, and we had also experienced people like Father Matthew, Father Toby, and Father Gregory, and all that. Gregory, I don't know whether to put you in the younger group or the senior group, but yet, we will share it. Thank you very much. Thanks to Father Ratna, Father Albert, Father Joseph Leo, Father Gregory, for the PT, for the modern modernity in the data and the use of data, for Matthew Thomas for sharing the wonderful work that you do, and for Tony for summing up. Thanks to the team, thanks to everybody for making this happen. We will do many such initiatives um, to use what is there and better our work, better our decisions, and many more innovations through data, which is data driven. Thanks to one and all for your patient listening and all those who participated and uh, bye. <laughs> Goodbye from Jimmy Thank you. Aquinas? Uh, yes. Uh, is uh, Father Regional is going to say a word? Father uh, uh, Hey, Good evening to see you all. Uh, I yes, don't plan to speak. In fact, I had told Father I will quietly join without <laughs> having, to, having to speak. No. Uh, yes, Father. You can say the words <laughs> at the request of the yeah. audience. In any case, I'm really happy that this is happening because um, I'm also thinking in the same line of the data and the importance of data. Uh, in fact, we have had a number of discussions with uh, Father PT with regard to the beginning of the new website and the approach that we want. We are also hoping that in the SPCSA meeting that's coming up from 1st to 5th, uh, we can present uh, data analysis, not so much really focusing from data, from another perspective of our animation of our region uh, to focus on our services to the poor, which uh, will be as much as possible, all inclusive, where obviously YAR, uh, DBTEC, etc., will have a particular role in or extra role in the reach that we have, uh, but also of our schools and uh, uh, parishes and every other work that we have. Uh, so we have prepared a rough proposal already and we will vet it out in these days with uh, the network heads and uh, whoever is interested in checking it uh, out before we actually present it to the council and and we hope uh, what we would like to achieve through that would be one is we are already mobilizing uh, the the networks are getting uh, are mobilized by themselves because of the importance of this in addition we would like to come to a a capacity as far as I heard only the last speech of Father Tony to draw from that um, to draw the data so as to be able to say how many poor people are we really serving in our institutions. Can we define that poor? Obviously poor cannot be defined in one way or uh, two ways or three ways but we can also choose okay, for the sake of data, we will at least monitor this kind of poor. Obviously acknowledging the services done to other types of poor. And so um, right now, if you really look other than data that comes from, let's say, AR service or a DB tech service or in, uh, individual institutions to some extent here and there, we don't have uh, an accumulated data information of solutions in India or solutions in South Asia, how much are we serving? Are we able to prove by data that what we claim is what we do? So what we would propose in this meeting is to the provincials is to 
to allow us to work on this. Obviously, as Father picked up from Ratna and said, data uh, collection uh, involves time and energy, and therefore the best way to avoid waste of energy. Uh, so these are things that are, um, say, vibing with the thinking that is going on around among us confreres, and that is what gives joy to see that we are thinking similarly and we are working at a go at goals that are the same so that we can achieve more for the poor young people to whom we are dedicated thank you i did not plan to speak uh, nor did i want to speak <laughs> thank you for the regional for sharing your ideas and also being present with us during this uh, uh, meeting and uh, on all the encouragement and support and the blessings Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to working together on this. <laughs> yes, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you. Bye. 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 Three students of Jerusalem. <laughs> I I miss listening to him because I by mistake I scheduled it tomorrow. That's why I came in late. So thank you, Father. You did not. Uh, I I couldn't amplify my mistake. So you. <laughs> <laughs> but, thank you. But I think that there will be the recorded ones available. No. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you very much. Thank you, Samba. Thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Father Joe, thank you. Joe left. Mm -hmm.